Hello. Welcome to the Friends of Zeus podcast. Uh, I'm Zeus. I'm here with Mike and Jack. Uh, we may be getting uh, visited by somebody else here later. Uh, tonight, uh, we are going to do a show on recent news. We're going to talk about the Roe versus Wade uh, judgment that recently came through. And uh, pretty much tonight, this is going to be Mike's show. He's done all the, the legwork, gotten all the information, stole the PowerPoints, all that. Um, so I'll, <laughs> I'll throw it to Mike back in 1973. 1973. Very good year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was, we're, what, you were three? Mm -hmm. I was going to say. You weren't even born yet, right? <laughs> yeah, I was born. I was born. I was about a year old. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, we're going to keep it a little loose tonight because this topic has all kinds of spider webs heading out in lots of different directions. But, but basically when I, what I wanted to talk about was, uh, you know, the, the inception of the decision back in 1973, like where it came from, um, you know, it's been around our entire lives. I mean, as three guys were about 50 years old. We really haven't had a time where it didn't exist. Um, you know, our gut feelings on it, kind of like maybe how our feelings on it have changed or not changed over the years. Um, you know, what the implications are. And then, you know, at some degree, like what the current political fallout is uh, from this leaked decision you know if it does you know assuming it 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 ends up being codified and and all that stuff um you know personally i mean just and i i'd like to go around with with you guys just before we even start getting into it um you know personally this is a topic that i've always made a point of avoiding talking about you know i don't i'm uh you know growing up when we did I just, uh, most of the, most of the girls that I, uh, dated, most of my friends that were girls, you know, that I didn't date, whatever, um, they were definitely pro-choice, you know, or, you know, pro-abortion or whatever. I mean, again, it's a whole other topic, like, what do you call it? I mean, it's so loaded, like, so much of the language is loaded around this, um, you know, and growing up as a young man, I always kind of felt like it wasn't any of my business. You know, when I was in my teens and 20s, I just, I don't know, I, I thought it was unpleasant, right? I mean, I mean, I, I personally have always felt that life begins at conception because I never saw any other point that it would start after that. Like, it just seems like that's when it would start, right? And like the divine spark. The divine spark. I mean, that's just personally, whatever. Um, you know, and and I always kind of gravitated to the the viewpoint of having it be available but rare, right? I mean, a, a lot of Congress critters have said that over the years, and people have said that. Um, as I grew older, I I started to get you know, I started to kind of push against uh, where things were going, where the, the the term or when it could be done was being pushed later and later. Uh, there was a certain level of callousness that I that I sensed in the in folks that were like vehemently pro-abortion. Um, where I felt like they weren't even considering some of the details that I personally struggled with uh getting to the point of you know the the so-called or not so-called uh partial birth abortion and um having abortion available right up into the point of delivery which i just think is personally uh, appalling um so you know and then once i ended up having a child myself um you know, I got a, a whole other view. So, look, this is this is a this is not a topic that <sighs> the it's difficult to be absolutist about it, right? So, I mean, you have people. I mean, there's there's certain views from 
from people that say, I don't want abortion to be used as birth control. A hundred percent. Who does? That's horrible. Um, yeah, but it, do I think it, that I may. we're going to do, we're going to hold, give me a minute. We're going to do a round robin. Do I think okay. that women that are having abortions are using as birth control? Maybe some, I don't think that's the, the predominant thing. I think it, I mean, if I put myself in the position of a woman who is choosing to have an abortion, it seems like a very traumatic event. So when I see things where people are celebrating it, it just, it, it, I, I can't understand that. Like it starts to, I, again, it, just, it makes it all very confusing for me. Like I, I don't get that whole, I don't get that whole uh, perspective. So anyway, just to start out, I just wanted to go around. I mean, that's my general, how I approach this. It's I'm very all over the place with it. Um, but let's go to Zeus because he seems to be hopping. So, so I have a personal experience with this um, that I'll get into later right? when it's more fits in with the show. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you from personal experience working in a call center for a medical organization where we took calls and they would sometimes call in about abortions or getting the, the is it RU486 you the day after? Yeah, I, I think so. I don't know. Or it's something from Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a triple. Um, so there is, at times, not all the time, but... I find, you know what, I find that when it's the person calling for themselves, there is a callousness to it. Now, again, you know, putting on my psych hat, that could just be acting tough. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. um, not wanting to draw questions out from the person you're talking to. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say that was all the time, but there is certainly at times people that I hate to use it use the term birth control um because I think and I also no offense uh if you guys are on that I, I don't like to call it pro-abortion because I have very complex feelings about it um essentially in my personal life I would never say do it I I just if, if my opinion matters to the person I'm going to say, no, don't do it. Um, but that being said, and I, I'll allude to this later, I think Jack knows this story um, from back in Strange Ways days. Uh -huh. um, that, you know that girl Barbara, remember that? Anyway, um, I don't know her last name, don't remember. Um, but I, I do feel like it's the woman's choice at the end of it all. It's the, it's the woman's choice. I cannot, I can't have it any other way because they're the ones that have to carry it. They're, they tend to be the ones that if things don't work out, keep the child and raise it. So I don't want to call, if, if, if they feel it's necessary, I, I, whether I agree or not, that's their choice. It, it, my opinions on that choice and I'll reserve the right to condemn them or understand when it happens. But at the end of it all, I can't make somebody do something with their body that I wouldn't be able to do myself. I saw an interesting, it was actually, it was a little hate filled and I kind of found it a little like, just another attack on like, you know, from the other side of, well, men should get bisectomies because they're reversible. And then that way women can't, can't get pregnant. Um, so, so like telling us what to do with our bodies was kind of the, the, the gist of what they were saying. So it was, it was a little abrasive, I thought. Um, I'm, I mean, this is a very heated subject. So people will come across as very angry in their beliefs. But it's stuff like that that I get a little, ang a little angry at. It's like, let's be civil we don't have to we don't have to force our beliefs on other people that i mean i think that's kind of what this show's been about you know we're just trying to 
you know, kind of talk about what things that are going on. Um, I just don't like, it's kind of, you know, I mean, it, it, it's kind of that way with everything, every issue. I'm like, you know, you have a right to your opinion, but, you know, I don't have to like it. I have to be civil with you. And I, and I, and I, and I have to be kind, but I don't have to like your opinion. And, and if I don't like your opinion, it's kind of that argument of, you know, if you don't like the show, turn off the TV. If I don't like somebody's opinion on something and I think that they were wrong in, from my personal values, um, I'll just cut, cut, I'll cut them out. I mean, it's, it's harsh maybe, and maybe I'll, and I reserve the right to change my mind later to think about it and then, you know, have a different opinion later. Um, I'm pers like I said, I'm personally pro choice, but in my own little world, I'm anti-abortion. And that's, I, it's probably more common than, than we think. I think a lot of people probably think that way. I don't like the ones that are diehard one way or the other. I think it's, I think it's, atrocious it, it, it's just another branch of tribalism it's what the republicans and democrats have been hanging their hats on since 73 anti-abortion pro-choice you know for as long as i've been alive it's been one of the issues that they talk about well one thing before we get to jack zeus just a little housekeeping i don't know if the tv's on behind you or if you can mute that but there, it's pretty loud it's kind of loud it's cutting in the well, Probably. he's at Patriots Pub and Grill, so. Oh, yeah. I don't know yeah. if you can. If you can't, that's fine, but. We turn down the gain, see if that helps. <laughs> yeah. So what What about you, Jack? I mean, what's your, what's your, not necessarily your opinion, but what's your history with this? Like, what? Well, it's funny, Mike. It sounded, when you kind of gave yours, you sounded a lot like me. Mm-hmm almost to a T. And Zeus hit on some points as well. This is obviously a complex issue. Uh, just for the audience sake, I remember when we were sort of talking about the need to do a show on this because this is the biggest thing in the country right now. Like I, I felt discomfort even discussing it because it's such a women's issue. And here we are, 350 year old dudes kind of talking about it, but it needs to be talked about. And I think we'd be remiss if we just said, well, we're going to, you know, let's just talk about Johnny Depp this week. You know, there's, it, it, it I just, mean, I think that's important too. Honestly. No, of, co of course it is. Of course it is because it, well, we maybe we'll do a show on that at some point because it's not over. It never it's ends. Over. It never it's ends. Over. But as far as this subject goes, I always looked at it from a few different directions. Like I remember when I was young, I, I also knew, like, I was young. Women I hung out with were young. It was an issue. I don't know if anybody's gone through life without knowing somebody that had to make that decision. And some chose one route and some chose the other. Um, and there had to be, I think, as a male, you have a certain level of respect for this is an issue that I will never have to personally deal with when it comes to my body. Now, I may be the, you know, the I may be the dad of, you know what I mean? Like that situation could happen where you, you get somebody pregnant because you're, for whatever reason, maybe you were careful and it didn't work out. Maybe you weren't careful at all. Um, but in terms of something physically growing inside of me, despite what the world is saying about how men can become women, which we've always touched on that being sort of something that doesn't make any sense. This is the reason why it doesn't make any sense. Yes. Okay, and I'm making the allowance that some women can't get pregnant, but 99.9, .9, you know what I mean? Like, right. this is this is something that makes sex a very serious thing and why you have to educate your children, why it's no joke. Mm -hmm. It isn't just fun and games, mm -hmm. okay? Because this, this is the natural biological result of sexual intercourse. And I think... People need to be raised to know that, and a lot of people aren't. Okay, we talked about bad parenting. We, you know, we've touched. This is our like what sixty sixth episode. We've we've covered very a lot. Good. Yeah, very good. Uh, so, just as my own perspective, I've always had respect for women making the choice, even though deep down I didn't like it. 
-hmm. because I think at my core, I've always been pro-life. And that's before I even had kids. That took it to another level like you, Mike. Like at that Mm -hmm. point, I was like, what are we talking about? You know, you're going in there, you're seeing ultrasound images. The technology's gotten so much better too. I can't imagine what what they're showing now because my youngest is Dude, they show you know, like three D images of the baby's face, right? And even when my thirteen year old was you know in utero, technology was pretty good, you yeah. know, back in back in two thousand nine. And and I was raised to believe that there was some something sacred about human life, and I that's still with me. Um, you know, I, I, I even struggled like in times of my life, I was pro, you could call it pro abortion or call it pro choice and pro death penalty. Like I, I was just, I your hate tip- that comparison. No, no, no. I'm just saying, no, no, I'm, I'm just- saying, I'm just saying, if you believe in the sanctity of human life at your core, then that becomes a complex issue for people too. And in, in, in one case, I don't want the government being the, the executioner. And on the other hand, why am I comfortable with the government dictating what women can do with their bodies? So it's a complex issue, right? I mean, it just has to be. But at my core, and and then also I got to, you know, I, I don't even feel the way I do for religious reasons because, you know, on a very, very good day, I might believe in a higher power. It's got nothing to do with that. It has more to do with what I believe is some kind of sanctity of human life that if you don't have it, anything goes. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, a, that's, that's just how I personally feel. I did, I was, you know, full disclosure, raised Catholic, Catholic schools, education, all pretty much my entire education. And, and I rarely act guilty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like one of the big things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but for me, it's a complex issue. And then also having gone through law school and taken constitutional law, um, we obviously talked about Roe v. Wade quite a bit. I remember dissecting the opinion. I remember different opinions about the opinion, just like there are legal scholars today. And it was a wide, widely held belief that it was sort of shoddy logic, shoddy legal logic in that opinion. Mm-hmm. And even though 39 states at the time in 1973 had to all, you know, pretense and purposes had outlawed abortion or at least had strict, strict restrictions on abortion. The court, you know, seven dudes just said they made up a statute. They completely set a viability standard into trimesters. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. as if they were legislators and they threw every amendment up against the wall to kind of arrive at the 14th and made it about privacy. Yeah. And basically created a constitutional right to abortion, noting that it should be safe, legal, and rare. And like Mike was saying, it's become the women's issue and no one cares about rare. Yeah. And it's almost sell like if you watch these protests, it's being celebrated as the mother of all women's rights. And part of me gets that because if I had something growing in me that I didn't want, I don't know if I'd want the law getting in the way of having it taken care of. But again, this is something that has its own genetic human code that's never existed on the planet before. There's got to be some autonomy to that too. And there's so many other options that... It never sat comfortably with me for the legal reasons, for the call it moral reasons. And my apprehension about it is really just that it's never going to happen to me. So why do I even get to talk about it? Yeah. And there are probably quote unquote fans of the show that also don't think that it's our place to have a vote in this. And you know, but unfortunately, we have a vote on any piece of legislature, especially one that might deal with human life. Um, well, I mean, you know, here's my thing, if I may. And even Roe v. Wade acknowledged that we're talking about fetal life. Mm-hmm. Right. They and, did not pretend that that wasn't the issue. And RBG even said that it was kind of a shaky, shaky legal law. reasoning. 
Yep. Yeah. Yes, she um, did. And she was the queen mother of like democratic women's you know, rights. Yeah. So yeah. you got to give that some some thought. You know, I mean, we're not for what it's worth. Anybody that's listening this far, I hope it's everybody. Um, we're not trying to inspire one way or the other. I'd like to think that we're just we're just giving a men's perspective. We're I think so far, or just a human very, perspective. Yeah, we. I think we're being very um, clear that we. I, I mean, uh, it's a sensitive subject. But also that we're we're kind of like yeah, it is a woman's right. At the end of it all, it is a woman's right. Um, well, that's that's the issue now, Zeus. Yeah, right. It's, but and it's also, I mean, not just to jump in. Here, here's the thing, and there's really like a lot of issues. There, there's there's this double track going on. So. Uh -huh. There's the there's the moral societal like I just I don't feel like I can make this decision for someone or whatever and that's all great, but then there's also the you know we live we're we're a society that's guided by the rule of law like we have if you have a civil society you, you can't just punt this right you you have mm -hmm. to come to some everyone needs to know what the rules are. I mean, sadly, I mean, it, it's well, difficult. And this is a difficult situation, but everyone has to know what the rules are. And and just to say, you know, the whole thing of like men have no say in this. I, I On one hand, I understand the passion uh, where that comes from, but we're human beings and we have children. We were children you know it, it's it's to say that you know we can just to me a lot of guys say that as a cop out right because they don't want to have to make it as they don't want to have to come down on one side of this and well so and it's hard I, it's hard to yes. i think this is probably a good time to tell my story with it and what probably helped to form a lot of my beliefs because i was far more anti-abortion when I was younger, but I had a rendezvous with a young lady back at back in the day. Uh -huh. And uh things happen. Um and we're playing pool one night and I I crushed her and I was taunting her, you know, like you know, two people that have been fooling around do. And she leans over after I after I beat her pool, and she says, I had an abortion, and it was yours. Like, smug. Oh. Like, you don't remember this? Vaguely. Yeah. yeah. And that really affected me. It really, really, um, it hurt. Uh -huh. And, like, you know, a lot of women probably don't realize this, but a guy will feel guilty when they do it and the guy didn't even have a choice you know what well, I mean? zeus, zeus that was a really shitty thing for her to say mm. just tell you yeah I mean, she that's... pulled it she pulled the kate corleone on yeah yeah it was, it was that's it was, pretty it was, that's a pretty shitty thing dude that's not that's not she cool. was a basket case she yeah. was she was a complete lunatic uh, there's stories i could go into that i heard about her like she she like had sex with a guy in a church like she was a lunatic i didn't know this until afterwards um so you know it happens it sucks but it did help me to form pretty strong opinions and 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 i still feel like it's not a choice that i should be making but i feel like it should be something that you have a say in uh-huh not final, not final say, like, like, you know. No, no, if it, yeah, due process, due process. Right, due well, diligence. Here, yeah. Well, here's the other thing, thing too. The gavel, I, man says no, must not happen. No, not that, just no here's doubt. how it's going to affect me. Here's the thing I've been thinking about, and I've always kind of thought about it. It's like, to, to say, when people say this is a choice, all right, all right, yeah. I mean, on one hand, I can see that, but it's a choice at the end of a line of a lot of choices. Uh -huh. And, and, you know, to pretend that someone is like, 
you know, the Virgin Mary who, who has like a pregnancy occur from out of nowhere and there were no choices made prior, but now it's a choice. I mean, and again, it's like people have sex and children are, are created without purpose many, many times, right? Uh-huh. I mean, so I'm not trying to pin that on the woman, but but this whole idea that, uh, it, it, oh my gosh, now all of a sudden I have this choice. It's like, there were many choices that were made that got us to this point, right? That are like, just like not talked about, uh-huh. uh, not not explored, um, and you're and you're not allowed to to talk about that. Uh, so anyway, not not coming down on any one side of it. That's always kind of that's uh-huh. always kind of disturbing. Cool. And then the other thing is where it's like, well, this is a women's issue. It's like, okay, so there are men and women are different. I know you're not allowed to say that anymore, but there's things. Can you define a woman for me? a female adult (laughs) human so but i'm saying there are things that men uh have to deal with in the world and there are things that women have to deal with in the world because men and women i hope this doesn't get us banned are different uh and have and have different experiences and and there are good and bad things associated with that so um Anyway, I'm, I'm just saying, it's like this whole idea of like where men have no say. I'm like, okay, well, women have no say about whether we go to war or not. Or women have no say about um, many things that men have to deal with that women aren't associated with. You know, wow. it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lazy argument um, to say that men don't have a say in this. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm with you guys. And like I said, I still go back to like, it, it, it has to be. It has to be a woman's choice. I can't. I can't deal with with a situation where a woman does not want to carry a child, and the state says well, you have to. Like I, that. That is horrible to me. Yeah, but that's, but but that that's right now. I mean, when it comes to the Dobbs case, you know what they me, did. What is you, you gotta explain well, that because well no what what they did was they said that this is a state's issue this is a federalist mm-hmm. issue right and that's and that's always been the way it is and it's the federal government's never step they've never acknowledged the constitutional right to abortion therefore it's left to the states to decide i mean this opinion's 98 pages long yeah, and it it didn't just overturn Roe v. Wade and KCB Planned Parenthood; it nuked them. And in all seriousness, it it dissected the legal reasoning behind both, and it pointed out with where the country was historically when the Fourteenth Amendment was drafted, and where it was when Roe v. Wade was drafted. Again, I mentioned thirty nine states. And what's interesting, it's kind of one of these cases of be careful what you wish for, because this this case came from Mississippi, where they had just uh, created a new statute that set the limit at 15 weeks. Okay, Mm -hmm. 15 weeks you have to get an abortion. And that was challenged. And that challenge led to the Supreme Court. And that Supreme Court. So, so I mean, the fifteen week meaning meaning that you ha- would have, and again, I want you to explain the Fourteenth Amendment Jack too for our viewers. Right? Are you saying the fifteenth, the fifteenth week meaning if you could not have an abortion in Mississippi after the fifteenth week, is that what was challenged? Correct. In other words, fifteen fucking weeks wasn't enough, isn't that's like three months? And that's well. Right. And that, that well, is 10, 10, 10 to 15, and I don't know, I'm not an expert, but 10, 10 weeks, 8 to 10, 12, 14, that's about when a lot of women figure out they're pregnant. Is that not accurate? Yeah, no, that, I would say that's probably not accurate. That I, sooner? No, that's, no that, sooner? that means, that means no, that means you've missed like three periods. Yeah. Oh, good point. Okay, good point. I'd, I'd say like yeah. around six weeks is when they start okay. getting Especially, right. I mean, you usually know something squirrely and there was an incident, you know, you're yeah, either crying or not yeah, crying. And, but... and you get you get the little EPT t- test, which they sell at every, you know, fucking Walgreens and CVS in the country. And you pee yeah. on a stick and, and away we go. 
Um, so, so what about the, the four? Please explain for our well, viewers. This, Roe v. Wade is hard to explain because they, it wasn't just that amendment. They took bits of the first and bits of the fifth. They kind of threw everything against the wall and they created something called a privacy, a constitutional right to privacy. You know, like, you know, you know, we have a right against the legal searches and seizures mm -hmm. um, and a right to um, expression, more or less. But not a right to privacy, necessarily. Not, not, not annotated, really, mm -hmm. not, not, not specified. Uh, it's been interpreted to cover a lot. But you can't um, kill someone in your own home and be like, it's right to privacy. Right, exactly. Um, there's, th there's things you can do, and it's the part of the due process clause, and they said that because there's an inherent constitutional right to privacy, such laws, and then, you know, would would be a violation. And they also, cr again, created this very statutory in nature, trimester viability. It was almost like they wrote their own statute. I found and that I interesting, like, when I did research on this, I mean, just recently... I didn't realize that the whole trimester framework was a, a result of Art Roe v. Roe v. Wade. Wade. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, and I think they set the limit at, or they they had set it at 20, I want to say 22 weeks was mm -hmm. sort of the logical cutoff, taking into account all the scientific evidence and Where viability. they said no state could, uh, could write any laws that would uh, affect a woman's choice during that time period. Right, but then unfortunately... Planned Parenthood v. Casey, or Casey v. Planned Parenthood. 1992. I, that almost overruled Roe v. Wade. Yes. And, talk, and talked about the undue burden standard. And that opened the floodgates even more to, stat, to state rights of what they could do and what they couldn't do. Like, even now, as this case is decided, you have states, I want to say California and New York, where you can literally terminate a pregnancy up until the moment of Let, delivery. Let's get to that. So I've got, let me share a screen here. Um, oh boy, here comes the editing problems. <laughs> all right. No, I, I'm wondering if he's going to show the fetal development chart, if we're going, if we're going in that direction. No, we're not doing any of that. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Slideshow. All right. Oh, so nice, nice work, Mike. Yeah, just let me go back here. Okay, so I'm just going to jump in, and then Zeus, I know you're going to jump in, and I have one little commentary. Can you guys see that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. The little commentary, and this is this is human nature, and this is any law. Um, it's sort of like the 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 push, the push, the push, right? So when in 1973, when our Roe v. Wade was was codified, and the trimester measurement was was put out there. You know, it's like any state uh, they could not make a law prohibiting or regulating abortion within the first trimester. With mm -hmm. the second trimester, it was a gray area, and in the third trimester, just I believe what they said was it just wasn't allowed. No, so, no, yeah. so over time, the people who were pro-abortion or pro-choice, uh -huh. whatever. I mean, we'll get to this later in the podcast, the, the language surrounding this. Pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed, right? To the point where yeah. two years ago, you have the governor of Virginia uh -huh. who is on, you can listen to it. No, it's awful. Is saying that a child who has been born, a child who is, whose mother wanted to have an abortion but was born alive viable surviving without assistance uh could be murdered basically yeah. on on mm -hmm. the table after birth after they've been proved like and backing that up so that, because as human yeah, I, beings we I, have to said, always push things right right and, right and that's what and people like me who and i'm not on the fence but who are just like what we explained at the beginning of this podcast I hear that, and I'm just like, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. I'm pulling the ripcord. Like, no way, dude. I'm, like, totally against that. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah. No, no, that's appalling. And I can't get you know with what? that. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll stand behind that one. I don't care what anybody thinks. But that's I'm saying it. human nature is always to push things, right? And there's always an element, no matter – I don't care what – I mean, I'm talking about political things that I personally agree with. 
there's always uh-huh. people even within those things that just they got they got to push it push it push it right it's beyond right. what's reasonable so anyway right. i've already got like three slides so let's you know it gets into what jack was saying so let's get through this and then two so you can go so basically this is just a history for people out there that that don't understand like when when R- Art Ruby Wade started and everything, and this is straight out of Wikipedia, so whatever. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, January seventy three, it was a seven to two decision, which Jack already, you know, pointed out. Um, you know, clinging on to the Fourteenth Amendment on the right to privacy, um, protected a pregnant woman's right to choose whether or not to have an abortion. Um, but it developed the three trimesters and balanced a woman's right to choose versus a state's interest um, in that. Because again, and we'll get into this later, but the whole idea of federalism, you know, one of the things that's a disaster with Roe v. Wade is, and we've talked about this in other podcasts, where it took something that was a this, this socially divisive, incredibly emotionally intense decision and tried to make the law of land over across, you know, 50 states when, you know, people, people have different feelings about this. Like it should be, this is an example of where federalism really needs to be able to, to deal with this, where different states and different people with different representatives are allowed to like have a say. Anyway, anyway, um, got into this let me go to the next slide here you guys can read this you know again the whole idea of like whether uh the light the the life of the mother is in peril i mean there any reasonable person arguments yeah but any reasonable person obviously i mean that's an issue but in my experience it seems like that's put forward as like the norm it's like no okay i think Mm -hmm. we can all agree that it's also it's also accounted for in just about every legislation that that i've heard of exactly same thing same thing with same thing with the small amount of cases that they cite about rape and incest those are also accountable in you know in in almost all these statutes if not all of them you'd have to look and we can talk i mean reasonable people can talk about that you know right and not to mention the fact that if Padme had had an abortion, oh, Luke and Leo would have never existed. Well, and here's the here's yeah, what Jack a little, <laughs> a little levity, little levity, <laughs> little levity. Here's what Jack was talking about. So you've got Colorado, New Mexico, Oregon, Alaska, New Jersey. You got to pull up, Mike. You got to no, pull up that slide. What you don't see it? Fire. No. Oh, that's it. Is it? Oh, no. You just got to click on that map one if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, you don't see it. I see it on the left, really tiny. Oh, well, we'll see. Well, anyway, I'm just telling you, I'll fix it in post. But New Jersey, New Hampshire, Vermont, Colorado, New Mexico, Oregon, and Alaska allow abortion with no restrictions uh, based on based on anything, pretty much right up to the moment of delivery. Right. Um, can you guys see this one? Nope. Okay, so let me get no, out of here. Yeah, we're just looking at the first one. Okay. Um, so, may I... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, jump right in. I'll just say, to Jack's point, throughout the states, there is a there's a uh, variety of legislatures that have huge different, you know, different opinions on on what's allowed and what's not allowed. Yeah, like that's that is the current state. Like everybody's everybody's hearkening back to Roe v. Wade and its standards, but they've been out the window since Planned Parenthood Casey and the undue burden standard. Ninety two. Yeah. I mean, if you have a state that says you can abort up until the moment of delivery and you just rattled off a couple of those. And then you have a state that's proposing legislation or passes it that says 15 weeks then that's the state of affairs right now anyway. Yeah. And and so this Dobbs decision almost just acknowledges that. It says, okay, this is really what's going on right now. And this is sort of the, how the country's supposed to work. And, uh, and that's, you know, suddenly everybody's talking about Roe v. Wade, like that, that was actually being adhered to. And it wasn't. It wasn't the third. The third trimester. The, the third trimester was suddenly up for grabs in several states. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, so what did this really change? I don't. I, I really feel like know. this might just be another one of those choreography situations. Like, it's changed, but it it sort of hasn't. I mean, it. All right. We'll see. But I wanted to bring up. So where I get issue with the, and again, I am in my world, my own little world. I'm pro life, but. <laughs> There's a couple things that I think are just, the hypocrisy is ridiculous. Like, first of all, from a biblical standpoint, having, like, like enjoying sex is the side effect. The purpose of it is to procreate. If we're going to be, like, you know, real about it. That's just a side effect. Well, that's that's not the Bible. That's biology too. Well, it's yeah. biology too, and and the pleasure is probably what makes us more prone to do it. Sure, uh, I, I would think. Well, it's but, a primal it's a primal instinct because that's yeah. what biology tells us Food to fight, do. Fuck, flee. Yeah. Right. Um, the thing that the, yeah, if it was folding laundry, right? <laughs> it, it probably wouldn't probably be less people. Yeah. Right. Um. <laughs> exactly. I don't fold shit. If it's balling out but throwing on the floor, I'd be the most. Uh, I'd be Noah. Yeah. Um, the one, the other thing that bothers me, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not anti-religion, but I get a little tired of hearing people base their choices on religion, as though if God wasn't there which I believe in them, they would make different decisions as though people don't have, as, as though we, our aut autonomy is all based on God's judgment of us. Like we wouldn't do right things and good things if we weren't going to suffer going to hell. It bothers me because we should be making those good, good decisions free of our religious beliefs. We should... It should be a natural thing to say, I want abortion or I don't want abortion, based purely on how we feel about things and not on some, right. you know, Penalty. some deity that, yeah. that, that and tells us that if you do this, then it's bad. If you do this, then it's good. Right. I, I, I find it, that I find almost as appalling as, it's just about anything. It, it, well, it's it's offensive to me that that people use God as the reason for their choice rather right. than just their own mind. Yeah, and well, I, I think I think that's a a pretty low level. I mean, again, with most, yeah, that's not the point. I mean, it's not like you got to do this or there is a punishment. Go in front of, go in front of a. Uh, uh, an abortion clinic and look at the signs, these appalling for signs. Some, like, for some, but that doesn't speak for, doesn't mean there's people, are, but it doesn't, yeah. mean they're, doesn't mean they're correct. I mean, I'm just saying a lot of people have that view. And right, but, and Those same people that have that view will, although they, they value life, they'll bomb an abortion clinic. They'll shoot well, an abortion I mean, doctor in the I'm head. I'm saying there's individuals there's like that, person. but again, you can't yeah, but I'm not going to throw, like, religion under the bus for, you know, Joe Hasey that's, like, doing that. I mean, you can do that with any organization. Right. There was a period where that was happening a lot. And, I, and granted, yeah, I like it's better now. The yeah. 80s, I think. I think it's probably better now. I just, again, I believe in God, but I believe that he's more, he's not as fire and brimstone as they say. I think, well, I think he allows us to make our mistakes and hopefully we learn from them. And if you learn from them, that's what gets you to heaven. Not, not this, not this letter of the law. You must do this. You must do that. You're a sinner or not a sinner. It's the same tribalism that we, that we see with everything else. It's either well, you're this or you're either that. well, just as far as tribalism and blowing up abortion clinics, we, somebody just set fire to a pro-life advocacy uh, organization that was in the news today. I want to say Multiple. it was in, yeah, I, I think. Oh, was it multiple, Mike? Many. Yeah, it's Many. Wisconsin, yeah. Virginia. See, they're pieces of shit in my eyes too. Well, yeah, that's right. Course. But you that's can't right. get distracted with all that. I mean, there's that A is going apples. to happen. Yeah, bad I mean, apples. 
you know, I don't spoil the whole damn bunch. I say, that's what I say. <laughs> so just a, couple, a great song. Well, couple, and well, this yeah. is an extreme. No, this, this issue is, it's a, it's a, the reason why we're talking about it, it, it just happened. And you have assholes on both sides that are winging Molotov cocktails. I mean, that's why it's something we're talking about tonight, not to just and, make a judgment ourselves. It's really I don't just. Think we've, yeah, may, if I may, I don't think I think we've been really good. Yeah, we've been no, we've been we've been we've been honest. We've been honest. All well, we have on this, all we have on this show, is our own stupid opinions, and that's what we do. Yeah, it's just it's just us. I mean, I, yeah. look, here's the thing, and, and we can get into, you know, how this is being covered in the media, which is just, it's just shameful. We should um, do that. We, and, and we can. I mean, really, it's – it's. Here, here's some questions. And, and this is as a society, um, as individuals, like friend to friend, husband to wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, parent, child. These are the conversations that we should be having. Like when, when does life begin and what, what is life, right? Um, are there – extenuating circumstances where abortion is is necessary um, or or should be available um what are the rights of unborn children right like and when mm. what station what station do they have i mean this whole thing of like oh it's just a clump of cells or they're not a they're not yeah, a so person until they're born yeah. You know, I can, I can even, I can even like when they're a zygote, you know, when they're just like this little clump of cells, all that I can, I can, it, you know, I can lean back a little on my beliefs on that. I, it's, I can it's, lean on, lean towards the science. I hate using that term. But I'm just saying, if you, if you believe in, in Americanism, like life, liberty, pursuit, of, like what is, what are the rights? When do you become... It, 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 and I'm just talking about in this country because we're talking about American laws. When do you become an American, right? Um, what's the difference between men and women and their roles in society and as individuals as it relates to this? You know, what is, um, how, how does the process and rule of law go into this? I mean, uh, you see people who are protesting outside of, justices houses and things like yeah. that and it's like listen that's against the law by the way yeah it's against the law but it's like you have to have a process you have to have rule of law if if the rules are that if you don't like an outcome you get to burn everything down that that's not a civil society i mean what what is that that's exactly horrible. i mean and then again, it's like, and also like gut feelings. I mean, one thing I've learned as I've gotten older personally, and it's funny, I wish I would have learned this sooner, but given almost any situation, the initial like 10th of a second reaction that I have is generally correct. And, yeah. it, and when I was younger, I would ignore that because I had to like, I had to like think about it, right? But, you know, I even tell clients sometimes, like when I present them with different like design ideas and everything, and I make a big point of being like, here you go. And like, I look at them and I'm like, what's your initial reaction? Your initial reaction is everything. It's, it's spinal cord. It's, it's like- Occam's razor, man. It's like, it's you're, 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 it's like, it's, 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 it's everything. If you wait, too long and you you get to you get wishy-washy with how yeah. you feel about things so yeah it's like gut feeling and that's why i want to start this episode with like what our initial feelings were about this because it's not cut and dry it's absolutely not cut and dry and for me somebody that is definitely like you know rule of law not rule of man uh process oriented um having laws be known I struggle with this. I mean, this is a very emotional and and passionate issue. It's not easy, and I wish I wish we would acknowledge that as a society and not have everything and and really just ignore the people that are like so absolute about everything. Well, I, I think it's a disservice. I think it's a disservice. 
I, I really do. There are certain things in society that really do always need to be case to, case by case. Again, you know, we were talking about the death sentence. I hate the I hate that that you know. <laughs> If you're for abortion, you're against death penalty or whatever it is. You know what I'm talking about. It's they always yes, yes. they're married. And and like my problem with that is if you're on death row, yeah, we gotta make sure. We gotta make sure you did the deed. Of course. That's fine. I get that. But I just don't see I never have understood the comparison. I don't think. They're the same thing at all. Because if you did kill somebody, if you took a life. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's and, uh, like, Zeus. Zeus, I think a lot of people are comfortable being pro-life when it comes to abortion, but pro-death penalty because you've sort of surrendered your humanity card at that well, point. Well, so so there's a, I want to say it's called the invisible hand. No, no, it's not the invisible hand theory. Anyway, the biggest problem for me with abortion is you're taking away potential well that's, innocent that's where i have a problem with it like this child yes they could be hitler or they could be abraham lincoln you know what right. i mean or you know pick your pick your guy you like you know uh, jordan peterson for me i like jordan peterson right. like they could be a world-ending monster or they could be somebody that you know cures cancer but, but and, and but that's, that's not i have but that's not even that's not even our choice to make. And and again, to get into the I third, also, I'm I'm completely no. It's it's I it's, have my own personal my own little microcosm. Again, I've said it before. I will not if if it's if if the if the gavel is put in my hand and I say done is done, I'm never going to do it. Okay? Yeah. I well, I I always looked at it this way. My my issue with it's easy for me to be pro life. Not just because I never have to make that decision in my life, which obviously makes it easier to fucking be have my opinion. But everybody I know on the face of the earth, everybody I like and love on the face of the earth used to be a fetus. <laughs> At one point. At one point, yeah. including myself. And that's yeah. pretty much that pretty much helps me sleep with my opinion. And it's fine. And, and but again, and I think we we we're, we're maybe we're belaboring it a little bit, but Again, I don't think, I think all three of us have said, at the end of the day, not our choice. And I got, and you know what, I, I will firmly fight for people to have that choice. Well, I really yeah, feel I that. But, but I just want my say. Does that, like, right. who's part of that? Right. Without me, it didn't, you know, it wasn't well, even a here, here's the thing. It's like again, it's like people talk about choice. You guys talk. I gotta go. I'll be right <laughs> Okay, but people talk about choice, and, and it's like we we or I mentioned earlier. It's not like uh, divine intervention. I mean, there were choices made uh, leading up to this choice, right? And 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 those need to be acknowledged. And I'm not trying to like. Um, shame anyone or, or no. whatever i'm just saying to to act like there weren't other choices that got you to this point and and then again the whole thing of the valuing uh human life i mean this gets into one of our earlier episodes you know where we're talking about elder care uh -huh. and euthanasia and things yes. along those lines you either value human life or or you don't and when you start quantifying or qualifying what life is and what it isn't, that leads to some very, very dark places. And um, yeah, yeah, and like like late term abortions, like late term abortions, and I mean all you know, and saying like, oh, this person's life isn't worth something anymore, and uh -huh. um, and and I don't, I think that is a. I think that's a very dangerous road to go on, man. Uh -huh. I mean, it, I mean, again, it, that's happened. That has happened before, you know. I mean, we see, we've seen yes. where that goes. Yeah. Um, and it's not good. It's not a good place. Um, you know, my whole thing is with people who are like very 
pro-abortion, and I'll use their term, pro-abortion rights, and we'll get into that. <clears throat> I'm just like, why are you guys pushing things all the way up to mm-hmm. late term and partial birth and after birth? Like, mm-hmm. What what is that about? Like, what I don't what, know. What what where where are you going? Like, I mean, yeah. do you do you really? Um, I mean, are you excited about? I mean, I, I just, it just, I don't well, know. And, so, I mean, and some of the, some of the protesters have songs. Some of them are laughing, talking about, I love my abortion and they're, they're carrying signs. And it's just like, it's so callous. It's so over the top. Yeah. I mean, and then, and then, and then the vilified <laughs> ones are the people that are legally protesting over a hundred feet away from a clinic. And it's like, if you thought they were killing babies in there, if that's how you felt in your gut, you might be inclined to try to get somebody not to do it. Yeah. At the very least. So the fact that you're calling all these people monsters and religious fanatics, like I just, you're kind of making your situation worse as yeah. somebody who, as some, like you said, as somebody who's just kind of looking at this, why are you so, you know, why zealously advocate for a post-birth abort? Like, I don't, I don't understand it either. Why, yeah. Why would, why would you do that? And I mean, over the years, um, you know, I'm definitely, I used to be much more pro uh, death penalty and, and, and I've, I've read all the horror stories and that yeah. people have done horrible things to each other. And it's like, I get the argument where you have to have the ultimate, penalty to deal with these people because it's just so horrible and i and i i get that i totally get that i do but i struggle myself because i'm like and and i'm and you guys know me i mean after 66 episodes you know i'm definitely not a, a government uh, dude brain, or brain. centralized power dude like i it 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 chafes my my shorts to think about having the government being able to take away life like that, you know, I mean, so I, I struggle with that. I I really do. I really do. Here's where, here's where I kind of lean towards the choice thing. Again, you got to allow people to make their own decisions, whether (laughs) it's right, whether it's wrong, it is autonomy is if we give up our autonomy, well, that's, Right. That's that's the big that's the, that's what these women have to fall back on is this. This is all taking place within the purview of their body. So I get it. I, I totally understand it. But the bottom line is, if this thing has its own genetic code, it's developing, it's going to turn into a full fledged human being. If you don't terminate it, eventually it's going to have a developing heart, a brain, 10 fingers, 10 toes, what have you. I mean, what else do you need to maybe have the government and the people and a democratic society step in and say, no, 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 no. Like, yeah, this is, this is beyond, this is not a tumor. It's not a tumor, not the tumor, (laughs) you know? And then like Mike Mike was talking about like the choices that lead up to it. There's a lot of choices. There's abstinence, there's contraception, there's motherhood, there's adoption. And then there's this one. That's my big thing, especially in this world where we're living in, where where uh, homosexuality in our entire lives it's never been as accepted as it is now. And you get a lot of people they can't have children themselves. So I do. I mean, the, again, man, I'm no, really this, the, this. yeah for infants. Adoption I think the, is fucking a great option. Two people that want a child. There's more people that want that children, children that than there. Then there are available for adoption for sure. And yeah, that is totally a viable. I mean, I am, I mean, it's a whole other, whole other podcast. My, my uh, first wife was adopted and her grandmother, her biological grandmother tried to convince her mother to have an abortion and she didn't. And, you know, I had a wonderful wife for a number of years. So, you know, it's, there are, you know, like I have to, I have to side with life. We're here for, for a very short amount of time. It's, it's, it's like, you're going to be dead forever when you die, right? You're, you're not going to be here a lot longer than you're here. 
So Bummer. I don't, I don't, I've never understood um, rushing that, you know, like making that happen sooner. There's We're plenty of flip, doing it flippantly, doing it flippantly, you know, or at least, or at least protesting that way. Cause I don't think any woman who's ever had it done. I don't think they're flipping about it at all. No, I, I, not I at all. I think they not take it serious as be, a heart attack. It's, it's gotta, gotta be, be horrible. It's gotta be horrible. Horrible. And, and, and the, the other thing is, you know, when I was alluding to like, there's other decisions, I'm not trying to be judgmental. I'm just, I'm trying to say that. Explore everything. Life has value. Like it is a, it is an immensely valuable thing. And, and there are many, many points that lead up. Like, again, if you get to the point of like, should I have an abortion or not? If you're valuing life, I mean, there's reasons why, um, there's reasons why it's difficult to have kids and raise kids and, and they're, they're a pain in the ass and they, oh my God, they don't, yes. they don't, they can't even help themselves for years. And all. I mean, it's a lot to invest. I mean, it is irrational. It is irrational to have children. I, I, I used to believe that I didn't have, I'm 50. I didn't have a child till I was 43. And the first all that time from when I was 20 to 43, I'm like, there is, I have no interest in having children. And people would be like, you don't know how amazing it is. I'm like, no, I know exactly what, how amazing. That's why I'm not having one. And then I like that. I was like that too. And then I, did, and then I did, and I wish I would have had them earlier, but whatever. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, I, I'm not like beating myself up about it or whatever. I'm, I'm not, I'm, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It, that's well, life. You, yeah, Mike, you live Mike, life in one direction. You live life in one direction. Mike, also, you can have as many as you want until the day you die. <laughs> that's true. That's a good how point. About this? How about that's this? Good point. For at least 10 I don't know how my wife feels my about life, that. No, I don't think so. No. Yeah. For at least 10 <laughs> years of my life, I have wiped another human being's dirty ass daily and your kids and your kids yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, my point being is like younger 21 year old me was like no fucking way am i gonna do that that's gross it's disgusting but man there's some there's this weird like for me with my boys man there's this like transference there's like this it's like they they bond their soul with you when you see them for the first time. But that's me. Some people might be a little more callous about it. But man, I look at a, I look at my babies, both of them, and it's just like, yeah, I'll jump in front of a bus for this kid. Yeah, isn't yeah, that of amazing? Course. Of isn't course. Now, with my oldest, I might jump in front of a bus because of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, I mean, isn't that amazing? I mean, it, and it's like, it really... Not to be like it's all about this guy, but when you look at it, it's like your place in the in the grand scheme of things, right? I mean, isn't it beautiful? Like you have a kid, and like you do all the stuff that you got to do to like get them doing what they got to do, and then there's a certain point in your life where you're like, I'm kind of expendable now. Like I'm here. Like I'm the stage of the rocket, and the, the next stage has taken off. And I'm just I'm falling back to earth. Well, I, I, what, I mean, I, that's I don't that sounds depressing. What I'm saying is, you there there is a time there is a season for everything, right? There's a time, there's a season. There's you know you have your job, <laughs> and it's beautiful. I'm saying it's beautiful. Oh, it's it's amazing. <laughs> Having kids is absolutely amazing, and that's the one thing too where I look at it with this whole abortion thing and. I'm like the joy when I see people who are where I used to be one time where they're like, I'm not interested in having kids. And, and at the time people are like, Oh, you don't understand until you have kids. And I was like, fuck you. I totally understand. Don't fucking tell me. But now I'm on the other side of the fence. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of true. It is kind of true. Like it is amazing. We we get to change our opinions, and if maybe it's the wrong one, maybe it's the right one, but we get mm. to change our opinions. Um, you know, my mom has she usually is just joking about it, but she's like, I nearly went away, you know, and did it. I'm like, oh, that's that's kind of fucked up. That's that is kind of fucked 
tell you that. Yeah. For your mom yeah. to tell you that. It's funny. Yeah. She sent me a text the other day. <laughs> They should have said something. She sent me a text the other day about how she was tripping balls at the um, at it was at Marywell Weather Post Pavilion, and it was the Who versus Led Zeppelin. Like this only this is the only time they've ever played together. And she was tripping balls, not knowing that I she was pregnant with me at the time. Which uh, this explains a lot. lot. Yeah, explains everything. Explains Dude, everything. You went- you went to a Who Led Zeppelin concert at Merriweather when you were in we utero? In utero, man. That's how cool I am. <laughs> Dude, that's freaking amazing. <laughs> yeah, so... You well, know. can I just say something? It's like, so, today's Tuesday. Mother's Day was just two days ago. Yeah, how ironic. So, I mean, are all of our moms still with us? Yeah, like, uh, mine is. Me too. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. I always call my mom on Mother's Day to thank her. It's like, you know, whatever. But how um, it's just amazing, man. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. that, that's the thing, too. Like I said, people that are like, I don't want to have kids. I'm like, I get it. Whatever. Make your own decision. But it's like, you know, my daughter, um, before she ever had ice cream, she's like, I don't want to have ice cream. Ice cream. Oh, yucky. my God. Your kid with the food. And now and now she loves ice cream. And I tell her, I'm like, you know, there was a time where you didn't like M and M's, you didn't like ice cream. It's like you don't know what you're missing. You know, right. uh, which one of you did she get that thing from? I don't know, man. I eat everything. I never, dude. I I never had a problem with that. I eat everything. They, they had to like, they had to like genetically manipulate food just to get her to eat it. They had to make like beef look like. Apples. She's like, she's like hydroponic. <laughs> yeah, but she's she's whip smart, man. It's like very, I'm very great. I'm very great. I don't know how smart she is. That whole eh thing really, she was really close to the end of her life with that. Hey, guys, guys, Um, guys, before we get totally off the topic, Mike, was there anything else going on revolving around this that you wanted to talk about? I really, well, we didn't get into it, and maybe we can do it on another episode. I'm kind of glad we didn't because this was a very pleasant, nice episode. But I mean, just like the, the current. The rhetoric surrounding this right no, now. I think, I think we should get into it. We please. can. No, we absolutely can. I, so you know, it's um, it's so poisonous and so counter to like what we're talk, what we've just talked about for the previous hour, twenty mm-hmm. minutes or so. You know, the the rhetoric that's flying around around this, and and how it's getting pushed, um, and how it's getting misrepresented as far as like who believes what and what this means and how it's being politicized it is um it's just appalling i'll open up to you guys i mean i've got examples but i mean you go ahead you guys go first with it it's disgusting well i mean for me i mean i'm leaning back onto the the days of for instance i worked in hagerstown maryland for a while and uh, there's an abortion clinic there, or pro life, mm. whatever you call it. Yeah. And you would drive by. I remember Hagerstown. And did you come out there with me? I think I think okay. I did. And drive you drive by this Planned Parenthood, whatever whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And there's these horrific pictures of like an abortion happening, or mm-hmm. and. I just think it's so beneath civil uh, behavior. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it I don't know either. I don't know, Zeus. I think I think fair is fair with this stuff. I mean, that's I, what it looks like sometimes when we're talking about late-term abortions. I used to feel that way, oh, too, okay, Zeus. Okay, so let me give you a flip side. How about you show a child... And and I and I really I mean I'm just giving the laying devil's advocate. How about if instead of that you show a child that's beaten badly from by his mother or the fucking horrific father that they had? Yeah, that they kept it because of some whatever dogma led them to keep this child. And yeah, I'm okay. It would have been. I'm not saying it would have been better for them to be dead. Probably. Yeah, I mean, that's the issue. Like that, but that. They don't show pictures of this child that was beaten near to death. Yeah, they do. 
father. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. There's all sorts of messaging. Where are they about doing? That. What? What? The, what? what Zeus. Do they Zeus. Do in Zeus. There, there's no shortage of of stuff out there on domestic violence and child protection. We have government agencies about yeah, but it. Do we they have, do it from we an have abortion PS, standpoint. We have. What do you yeah, want? What's your point? Like, yeah, what what is, it's yeah, better what to be dead. Is better to be dead. It's better to be dead. Grotesque pictures on one side. Of well, they're yeah, grotesque. That's the whole point. Zeus. Is they're grotesque? That's the that's the whole that's point. That's the whole point. That's exactly why they're doing it. Yeah, is because Zeus. they don't want it shoved under the rug. And and that's the whole Fair thing. With, that's that's the thing with this issue is nobody wants to see how the sausage is made. That's the which problem. is what Jack said in the first minute, in the very beginning of this, before we even started it. I mean, and and that's why this issue. I like here's something that's a bigger picture thing for me that I took away from this. Now, now that this has happened, and the roving hordes of protesters are out fighting with cops and lighting fires already, yeah. and we're seeing that all again. this. I wonder if for pro-lifers, this becomes a be careful what you wish for thing. Because I wonder how much this is going to get the youth vote out and this is going to affect the elections this year. Because I, I think that there's a lot of people that typically don't bother to vote, when especially when it comes to the midterms. And I think that they're the reason why they're making this this women's issue is because they're trying to get more people to come out and vote with the Democrats to pass fe to pass federal legislation to basically make make it legal no. and and because we've been talking about this red wave that was going to come in in November and now this might be the torch that they need to lead the masses to get to the voting polls and I think and that's heard... why it was leaked and I yeah but I think it's oh going... that was yeah. yeah that was so orchestrated man I, I think it's I think it's going to galvanize people on a lot of sides, man. I mean, yeah. I not like yeah. I needed to be galvanized, but <laughs> no, 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 I'm definitely more galvanized. I mean, it, it's it is. I, I I think it's a net zero. I real. I mean, I thought about that, Jack. I it definitely yeah. is going to get people out, but I think mm. it's going to get people out both sides. To, yeah, I think it's going to get people yeah. out from all over. I think it's going yeah. to be a net zero. Okay, I mean, just personally, who knows? I'm not. A no, guru. no, Mike. I'm, Mike, yeah. yeah, Mike. I mean, I, I and I've heard like you know conservative speakers, and I've heard even some liberal speakers say the same thing that this is now the dividing issue, and it's going to get everybody to go out to vote. But, but come on, man, it's always I, been a dividing issue. Yeah, always. but now it's like it's it's red meat. It's like right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, this is going to be it now for a while, and and that's another thing we didn't really talk about. The reason why this was leaked was to create some of these protests outside judges' homes. And this and and this opinion is not final yet. Where's right. their privacy, huh? No, Where's what I'm talking. No, what I'm talking about is they're they're hoping to scare or influence some of these judges that are alleged to sign on with Judge Alito. Like right now, they're saying it's a five to four. I yeah. believe. Yeah. And they're they're thinking that this may flip a judge or two just because of the social Dude, pressure. Schumer was out there threatening, Th threatening. physical violence against. Yeah. I mean, you can you can couch it other directions, but any yeah. any he said, fair reading of it, yeah. he um, said you, you're not you going to know reap, what you're not. He said something. You're not going to know what hit you. You're going to reap the whirlwind and yeah. All the, yeah. So I want to say that Clarence Thomas, I think he was referring to this recently, said that that like I thought this is kind of whether I agree with it or not is not the point. I but I did think it was poignant. He's like he's like. You know, we want to have these rules and we want to have these laws, but but then we want to nitpick them. We want to say, oh, well, you made a choice, but I'm not on it. And we want to fight it. He said it's like the death of, it's the death of like the society. Rule of law. Like, yeah. That's what, said, Mike, was, that's what yeah. Mike was saying in the beginning. Yeah, I, I think I thought it was, I, I haven't really explored it much in my own head, but I but I do get what he's saying. He's saying that like, Mob justice all, can't have. Yeah, all this, all this coming after the Supreme Court, whom you've elected. No, you um, didn't. No, you, well, they were no, appointed. No, no. Well, or well, who, you hey, elected separation no. of powers. No, yeah, no, but you elect the president that nominates. Right, right. right. That's what I'm saying. Look, like, like, like who you you basically. Yeah, Trump. Trump got three of them. A, yeah. So the point. I mean, the point for me was that. You get them in by by your vote, essentially. 
Um, and then you're going to bitch about what they do. And, and I, I'm kind, I mean, I guess I kind of lean towards what he was saying that, yeah, be careful. It's back to what you said, be careful what you wish for. You just mm. might get it. Right. Look, there are people and not, not to just like, now I'm going to like, I'm going to go like right off the rails, but listen, there are people that don't give a shit about process, due process, mm -hmm. civics, just what America is all about, like how we do stuff. They don't give a shit about that. Like they just want the outcome. They just want the outcome. So for people like this guy who gives a shit about process, because if you don't have process, you don't have a civil society. Right. This is fucked up. And these people are focused on the outcome and process be damned. That is the path to uh, a lot of death and pain and war and all this other stuff that I've been talking about. It's not, it is not beanbag. It is not a joke. And these people that are like, I, you know, if I don't get the result out of the Supreme Court that I want, I'm going to like go do all this other stuff. This is, this is provocative incredibly anti-american and i'm not talking about anti-american like anti-usa i'm talking about the idea of what this entire country is based uh -huh. on yeah these but it's like the norm it's these, the norm now but i'm saying these people need to be uh challenged faced Arrested. and 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 pushed back on severely because this doesn't end well if they're not and there's a lot of people that are like you know what i just kind of like disagree with that f that dude it's not about disagreeing with these people. They need to be put back and pushed back again. Well, yeah. When you're when you're advocating for an outcome from the third branch of government, which is the judicial branch, which is the, its primary reason for existence is to be a check on the executive and legislative branch, and then you start pretending that it's supposed to be represent you know a representative branch right. of government. You are, I don't know what you are, but you're not an American. And you're right. not believing in what Communists America is, is what about. You are communist. <laughs> I'm just saying it is dangerous. It's not just a matter of disagreeing. It is a provocative, dangerous path to be on. You know, I don't care what you believe yeah, about abortion. And, I don't that and, has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Right. And and Mike, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, and also there is a place for the executive branch to enforce the law at this point. And, and they're not. And they're not. And they're typically not in the Democratic run cities and states like we saw it in 2016 in Washington, D.C. and a couple of other places after Trump won the election. We saw it in 2020 with the BLM and the Antifa riots. In, in major Democratic cities that were they're basically letting these people do whatever the fuck they wanted. And yeah. I, I, you know, and, and say what you want, you know, January 6th, you had a couple of hundred, maybe 150 assholes that decided to go in the Capitol, even though some of them were invited by police, you know, that was not, that was not a good look for the, for, for the MAGA people at all. You know, I think it's been overblown, but whatever. And this is what I'm curious about now, because now you've got some, like, I think it was Kavanaugh, maybe it was Alito, but in Virginia, you have a lot of these protests at, at one of the judges' homes. Maybe it's Kavanaugh, right? Alito. It's, yeah. it's Alito. So they're out in this residential street right in front of the guy's house, which violates federal and state statutes. You can't, you can't do that. It's, it's like judge intimidation is equal to like witness intimidation or juror intimidation. You're not supposed to put pressure on a judge to change his opinion. And you're certainly not supposed to do it in this residential neighborhood, whether whether the neighbor ratted them out or somebody doxed where these judges live. Why isn't Governor... Um, Youngkin. What, yeah, Youngkin. Why haven't the police stepped in? Like, what's his excuse? It's like they're there, but they're not doing anything. And where's the... Where is the um, Department of Justice? Oh, that, that we already know where they are. They don't yeah, give a fuck. They don't care. They don't so care. what happens... I mean, you've got the... Th this is just last night. The... Uh, the, the state's attorney, the district attorney for, not district attorney, I'm sorry. Attorney general? Attorney general for Virginia. He's on a sixth floor in a in an office building in Richmond, and a bullet hole went through his office window. And they're like, wow. well, it could have been anything. I'm like, really? It could have been anything on the sixth floor? 
I lived in Baltimore for 20 years. Lots, oh lots of bullets fly around. I get that, right? I'd go to a deli. There's a bullet hole in the window from whatever. Mm -hmm. Not on the sixth floor. Like, that's not random. Who's shooting? Right. Anyway, did you guys hear about that on the news today? No, I didn't no. hear about that one. No, not no. at all, man. That just happened last night. Molotov cocktails, all this other stuff. I'm just saying, look, you win some, you lose some. You know, it's like, I don't know, man. It, look, it's difficult to have a political conversation with people that have zero regard for the, law. the institution and the law. Right. And, and we have a Democrat party, which is a Marxist party. And I would invite anyone on this show to debate me on this because they mm -hmm. come right out and say it. I'm not just like making it up. They say right. it. You have this Democrat Marxist party that that every day comes right out and says how much they can't stay in this country and how they hate Americanism. Again, this isn't me saying it. This is them saying it. So I'm just saying these are these are dangerous times that we're living in. And it, it makes me crazy because we just had this whole episode about Roe v. Wade and abortion rights and all that stuff. And uh -huh. we, there's a lot of, there's a lot of gray area. There's things that we agree and disagree on. Like I, I can be convinced of things. Like I can have a conversation on this stuff. But uh -huh. when some, when I've got the governor of Virginia being like, well, you know, after the baby's born, we got like 20 minutes where you can like slaughter it if the mom yeah. doesn't. Oh. And then there's people that are supporting that and being like, yeah, I'm, well, I'm the crazy person for having yeah, a problem and, with it. I'm like, and, I, and, where's and the, the common the, ground? Where is yeah, the common for, ground? And just for the record, Mike, you're talking about a former governor of Virginia. Not former the, governor. Yeah. Northam. Yeah. Former yeah. But, I, but yeah. But I mean, I'm not sure what the current abortion statute of Virginia is right now or if there's a proposed change to that. Just just for the record. But there like, were people I, that had no problem know. with that. I mean, I know. He was on he was on like NPR with two women when he when he gave the statement and nobody no one said pushed anything. back. Nobody pushed back. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, it is disgusting. It's disgusting. It, I can at least go that far. You know, it, it so is, we, this I mean, is such it, a you know, yeah. it, 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 it's, oh, it's well, foolish to think it's foolish to think that the baby, once it breathes in its first breath, no, they don't it's got a soul. I, like, I don't think you know. I don't know. Did, oh, he said they make the baby comfortable or something. Right? Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's like the worst part. And people are like, "Well, you're it's comfortable. It can't even talk." Well, people are like, "Well, that's you know, you're just nitpicking." I'm like, "This was the governor, the yeah. governor, yeah, the guy who wore state, the guy who also wore blackface and wore a clan hood or something." I Look, remember that. Yeah. It, it's I've never seen a situation before where if you just like quote people back what they say, you're it's like misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this yeah. is what you actually said, and they're like, "Wow, well, you're you're being divisive." Right. I'm like, clearly "I'm just quoting was, what you said." I was high on heroin. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> my I am just so heartbroken on this entire topic because it's just like it, it's I I can't that I want I have empathy I have a lot of empathy I have a ton of empathy, but I also refuse to just get bullied off of uh -huh. points that I, that I value. And, uh -huh. I, and like I feel like it's, I feel like it's just, this, this, it's just such a, it's so, it's just such a destructive. Right. Yeah. Place. And also, and uh, just for the record, I'm okay with this being a, like, I'm all right with the, the people, the democratic process happening yeah, where 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 people like us and people like women and everybody who's old enough to vote can vote on their representatives, and and then the representatives can vote on proposed hundred percent, hundred percent, and and like right now I live in New Jersey, okay, probably very relaxed abortion laws in New Jersey. I would, I know, the I, most I, it was I, purple I, it, right up to birth is allowed right up to without birth, restrictions. Right. And if that's the way my fellow New Jerseyans, New Jerseyites, whatever, if the if that's the guys they vote for and those are the statutes, that's the law of the land, then I have to live with it. Or 
choose or to vote. lobby against it or whatever or vote, or move. vote like no yeah. i have the right i have the right to vote i also have the right to move yeah and that's you know? what I, that's hey. what drives me crazy is like i feel like There's i will accept things like i accept things and then there's people that don't. And I'm like, well, it doesn't work that way. Like, I'm not, right. you know what? I'm not going to accept things. That's like when we talked about like 2016, Russia collusion, and then 2020. That's mm. what, that's what, what was, did you say? Burn my chaps or chap yeah. my ass or what? Which it's like, I'm not, chaps. I'm not just going to like accept something after I just had four years of people like completely not accept things. I'm yeah. like, it, there's got to be some parity, right? You know? Well, I'll, I'm just saying all I can do is vote. It's all you can do, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I, I'm not going out protesting in front of fucking Planned Parenthood clinics. No. Like, I mean, I, I have no interest in doing that. Yeah. Um, this How is about the, law... the shame that you would you would, and I know that maybe we differ on this, but you know, these girls are walking out of there with like blankets Trauma. over their heads and trauma. And, yeah, it's horrible, dude. It hurts my yeah. heart because I don't. I mean, some of them do it because it, they feel in they their have heart to. hearts like it was the right thing to do. Of now, course they do. This, you've got of this course they do. Person that does it without even talking to me, and right. You know, at the end of the day, probably worked out for the best. I, I mean, sure. I would have chosen it, and I would have. Right. I would have locked myself into it at the time, but. I would have been stuck with a complete lunatic. Well, I think I think to be fair to us, we have treated this as the complex issue that it well, is. I think we've been very kind. I like. I mean, I think our I think our opinions are just opinions. But I but I think our opinions are good. I don't think we've damned anybody on either side too much. No. I probably usually being the more like try to be centered guy. I've had probably firmer opinions than you guys. I don't like seeing those pictures in front of the place i i've made right i've made my my opinion clear but my opinion is just based on in my own life and of then course side of my life is different and that's how most of this should be i i'm not going to tell you how to fucking put on your pants man you know really? it's like it's, I, mean, you know, I could use i could use I the help i just yeah i have problems I have I'm usually problems. a left. I'm usually a left leg first. Me too. Right leg second guy. Yes. If yeah. I'm sitting on the couch, maybe I put them both in and then like kind of jump up, you know, do that whole <laughs> thing. But yeah. otherwise, you do it your way. You want yeah. to put on your underwear before your pants. That's, that's the key. That's the key, man. That's like the that's that's the key. So, um, Jack, I think we may have. Yeah, I think I think for we've. This episode, um, uh, I'm curious how this one visually turns out because, like, are we? Are, do you guys see us like in individual boxes, or do you see us? Yeah. Like, all I, oh, yeah. all I see is Mike talk when Mike's talking, and I see Zeus talk. Oh no, no, you can see that's, all of us. That's something you you've got yours on like speaker view or something. But yeah. We okay. Mike's okay. got it on gallery view. We're fine. All right. Well, um, either way, either way, clearly we've been on for a, a long while now. And uh, although we could talk about this issue endlessly, I think it's probably time that we wrap things up. Yeah. Man, we know how to pick topics. Yes, you do. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I feel Kinda like it's like be. I feel like we're not even picking it. I just, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. We need to make pee pee's. I'll be right back. Well, we finally got Mike. I was supposed to waste all the time. <laughs>